The Old Man was a little bit of an odd episode. The whole idea starting with, you know, Jerry, Elaine, and George doing volunteer work to kind of help senior citizens, like, keep a little company, seemed just a little bit... Uh, it seemed like it didn't quite fit them. They didn't seem like any of the type of people who would want to do something like that. Especially with, um... With, um... The story of what led all three of them to do that. Uh, the, the idea, though... It was one of those things where, after watching the inside look, I feel like it was, like, something where, okay, I have an idea for something, like, li like deeper into the story, but, like, I feel like the beginning just... What didn't quite connect the dots to what the characters were, in my opinion. Um, this idea it was one of the one writer Bruce, whatever his last name was. Um, he did volunteer work where he went. He was you know interested to you know spend some time and talk you know to some older older um, re older not older relatives, um senior citizens, and they were going to be you know, telling these stories from the past, and instead they ended up being some boring person and it was not that great at all. So I feel like, you know, I try to get the humor out of that, but the idea of them even coming, of, of Jerry, Elaine, and George even doing that, to me, just didn't quite make sense. Like I said, they just didn't, they didn't seem like people like that. You know, you see them in other episodes where they have little patience with other people and just, you know, sometimes, you know, they have either dumb luck, they, you know, they lose them, or, um, you know, they're the ones who want to get out of what they're in. So, like I said, it seemed a little bit out of character uh, for them to want to do something like this. Um, but, of course, they still screwed it up in some ways. <laughs> um, so the story is, um, what gave them the idea? It started actually with Elaine be the first one to do it. Uh, at the beginning of the episode, they were sitting at Monk's. And George starts going on and on something about how maybe he needs to meet... Um, he needs to meet someone who doesn't speak English. He goes on about that for a little bit. That leads to Elaine wanting to help people, like you know, to you know, meet people by doing volunteer work with senior citizens. Basically, you know, like talking with them, maybe taking them out for coffee or going for a walk or something through through like the, this one agency, which to me, I'm like. I know a lot, of pe few people actually who do work do work like that. Except it's not volunteer work. Which okay, I mean, again, volunteer work is nice, but I'm thinking you know, there's a lot of people who get paid for this basically. But you know, that's me going off on a different angle. So that somehow leads to Jerry and George wanting to get in on it also. Um, Elaine's name, her I can't remember what her first name is, but but her, she called her Mrs. Oliver. Uh, George was Ben Canton, who was 85 years old, and Jerry's was Sidney Fields, who was 87 years old. That name actually came from uh, the character Sid Fields for Abbott and Costello, um, which both Jerry and um, Larry Charles were big fans of. Of course, Kramer came in, and like any time you know they come up with an idea like this, whether it's you know marriage or you know volunteer work or you know, a bunch of other, you know, ideas that they come up with that Kramer's kind of out of, out of the loop. Kramer, of course, has, like, the uh, the complete opposite reaction towards it, and it tries to talk Jerry out of it. It's like, you know, what are you thinking, you know? And he's saying, this age, he's probably, like, a scam or whatnot and such. Um, in the midst of all this, though, Newman came in, and um, it's revealed that him and Kramer are getting ready to... Um, they, they, they want to sell records. So they're asking Jerry if he has any records that he's not going to use anymore. To which he lets them take some of the stuff. Um, in this conversation, it is also revealed, this is the first time it's mentioned, that Newman um, is a, works for the, for the post office. He goes on with some speech about how, like, you know, mailmen go crazy because the mail never stops. And, of course, you know, Newman never delivers all the mail. He And, of course, in a later episode where he was trying to get a transfer to Hawaii, and, you know, Jerry helps him out because he wants Newman gone. He doesn't get the transfer because the, he delivered too much mail because they knew, and that made them know it wasn't Newman who was delivering the mail. Um, but the first set of records that Jerry, I'm not Jerry, that uh, Kramer and Newman 
uh, take into this one shop. The guy only offers them five bucks for it, which I feel like you know they should be getting a lot more money than that. So of course they, you know, they were not happy with it at all. It was just five bucks. Um, and then the three of them go to visit their their um, the pe- their um, their senior citizens they were given. Jerry goes to see Mr. Fields, who has a housekeeper who doesn't speak English. Uh, and Mr. Fields is this grumpy old man that is senile and like doesn't even recognize the agency or whatnot. Jerry's trying to be nice and make small talk with him and he wants to go for a walk. Uh, but basically the guy has like no interest. He's being he's being like not very welcoming, just cranky, and he's basically telling Jerry to get out. Uh, but while Jerry was there though, he noticed some records, which we'll get back to that later. So you know, that doesn't go well. Then George beats his uh, his uh, senior citizen, uh, Ben Canton, who I believe was named after a Boston Braves player, I think I, I read somewhere. Um, and he's telling George about how he's not afraid of death. And George finds that kind of crazy, you know, and um, or or you know how or how this guy saying how like, he's so satisfied with with, with life. And he's ready for, for to move on to the next to the next phase, which is you know everlasting life, you know heaven, and all this stuff. And George was just like, you know, it's like you're crazy. Why are you why are you like this? Well, Ben fires George, <laughs> and then Elaine goes to see hers. Mrs. Oliver has a big goyer on her neck, the size of a football. Like, it feels like she just feels like, like you, it's like two heads talking to you. So the scenes we actually see Elaine with her. You know, Elaine just can't look at her. Only time she was able to look at her is when this lady told her that she had an affair with Gandhi. Even showed her a photo of them and everything. That's the only time Elaine was was able to look at this woman. But, of course, George fires his. Elaine can't even stand to look at hers. And Jerry's, you know, just doesn't like him. So, of course, you know, they weren't happy about that. Um, And then, of course, but then, of course, um... Things are circling back. We're still going to be seeing more of Sidney Fields because first off, Jerry told George about uh, the housekeeper who does not speak English, and George was talking about earlier in the episode how um, how he thinks he should meet someone who doesn't speak English. Maybe he'll have more success there. Um, and then he also tells Kramer and Newman, who they told him what happened with, with Jerry's records, how they're, all, they're only going to get five bucks out of them. He tells them about the record collection that Sidney Fields has, and he was going to be getting rid of all of his records. He wanted to throw them out. So, um, they all go back to Mr. Fields' residence. George, first off, is trying to make small talk with, um, with the housekeeper, since she does not speak English. And then Kramer and Newman are trying to take the records. Well, of course, you know, Mr. Fields again, is just some cranky, senile old man. It leads to him, you know, wrestling Newman and Kramer trying to get the records. Uh, Mr. Fields actually bit Kramer's arm. And then Kramer was able to yank his arm free, but Mr. Fields has false teeth. His teeth went flying across the room, landed in the sink. George said he saw something to sink, so he's trying to run over there and turn on the light. But instead of hitting the button to turn on the light, he accidentally hits the button to turn on the garbage disposal. Meanwhile, mangling up Mr. Fields' teeth. So he has no teeth, so Jerry was going to get ready to go take him to the dentist. So we have um, George, Jerry, Kramer, and Newman with all of the, the records going downstairs and trying to fit into a cab. Well, then they realized one, none of them stayed with Mr. Fields. They went back upstairs. I can't remember what happened to, to, to the housekeeper, but Mr. Fields was gone. And, of course, this causes, you know, the agency to really get on them. Um, they were not happy at all with Jerry whatsoever. Uh, Mr. Field's son actually came to his own apartment, and they are they're trying to find him. So they all went looking. Meanwhile, um, well, first, um, before all that happened, actually, Kramer and Newman took all those records to back to that same shop. The guy don't give them 20 bucks. Only $20 for all the records that they had. They had some big names in those records, too. And it led to um, them getting to a fight with um, with the guy, um, and unfortunately the records broke, which Mr. Field's son Tim also was not happy about that either. 
Um, so they all try to go looking for him. They tried calling the apartment. He didn't answer the phone. So they, they, they decided to check the apartment in case he decided to come back. They went back to the apartment. They walk in. And George, which who er, I forgot to mention this, earlier in the episode when he first met the housekeeper and knew and was making a small talk with her, he says that he wants to d- dip his head in, 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 oil, in baby oil and ru- or something like that and rub it all over her body. Sure enough, they're in the apartment. George's head is in baby oil, and it, it just it was just like a they had music playing and everything. He was shirtless, and uh, he goes, "Yeah, we couldn't find him." Now, in an alternate version, it was show it was it was later shown that that um, the housekeeper was able to speak fluent English, which completely turned George off. The episode though then ends. With the um, next day, uh, both Sidney Fields and Ben Canton were sitting at Monk's having a conversation very similar to how J- Jerry and George would accept, you know, they're older. Mr. Fields was saying how he had met this lady um, who had a goiter, I was talking about Mrs. Oliver, uh, who had an affair with Gandhi, but all, obviously said that it didn't, didn't work out. He wasn't going to see her again. He was kind of turned off by her. Uh, but that is basically the episode. Um, Really, the only fact behind the scenes I have for this, besides the fact, like I said, this this, this idea came from one writer, Bruce. Um, what's his name again? Bruce begins with a K. I will find this in a second here. Um, where is it? Where is it? I have the notes here. Bruce uh, Kirschbaum. If that's even his name, uh, he was a, was the one who came up with the story. Like I said, the idea of this was was for the fact of you know um, thinking you're going to be you know meeting you know a senior citizen and they're going to tell you these all these old stories from the past. That, that very it's very intriguing. Is it going to be either so boring that you don't even want to be there and whatnot? Uh, like I said, interesting story. But like I said, I still feel like the idea from them even wanting to do to do this stuff with the senior citizens to me just felt a little like. It just didn't feel like it, it, it fit um, the characters of Jerry, George, and um, Elaine. Um, the other thing, too, um, this was another appearance with Newman and, and Kramer like kind of working together. Um, Michael Richards, though, had some concerns that was happening a little too much. And, yeah, we still saw them do some stuff, you know, eventually still together, like, you know, like the rickshaw stuff, um, and the bottle deposit when they drove all those... Um, those bottles they're trying to drive them to um i think michigan i think it was to um or minnesota one of the two to um you know get you know money for all of them and whatnot they still did stuff but they didn't want that to be the main thing about newman was it basically be like you know um kramer and newman having like a partnership like michael richards did not want that you know to be you know like a permanent thing like you saw newman on screen but not every time it has to be this whole partnership um, which, of course, you know, this led to Newman being off off camera for a little bit. But, of course, they eventually, you know, brought him back as, like, you know, the gold digger who was just, like, Jerry's, like, bitter worst enemy, basically. Just pure evil. But, like I said, this was also the first episode where it was revealed that, um, that Newman works for the post office. Um, but that's basically it. An okay episode, um... We'll though move on though to the next episode though, which is a good one. Um, it's called the implants, and um, there's another good like kind of like you know closing you know to that episode, kind of like so how it was too in the um, oh what's the episode called again? What's the episode called again? It was oh in the Cheever letters, um, kind of like you know a similar ending to that in some ways where someone was you know unaware of like you know of a certain line. There was a scribe saying, and it was about the certain part, the guest star, but it was good. It was also a pretty good Peter Melman episode. I definitely will give Peter Melman some praise several times throughout these reviews. But um, I'll see you next time, guys. We're getting close to the end of season four, which is again was the breakthrough season. It's been a very good season, but I'll see you next time, guys, in the implants. So, what were your thoughts, guys, on the old man episode? Do you agree that the whole idea of the three main, of three of the characters, you know, being uh, being interested in helping senior citizens was like you know like 
fitting or was it like not it was kind of like a little out of the ordinary leave your thoughts down in the comment section below be sure to always to slap a like on the video and subscribe for more content come my channel and follow me on twitter as well at demand airboy 93 till then guys i'll check it out i'll see y'all later have a great rest of your night peace out everybody